Okay, integration, integrating factors. We have a first order differential equation. Uh, it's linear. The y's are nothing funky about them. But these factors here in terms of the parameter x can be really crazy. Okay? Now, the idea is, is to recognize that if I just had the right stuff sitting here and here, that this could be a product rule. Okay? Now, think about if I had some function i times y, take the derivative, what would the product rule say? Well, that would be i prime of x times y of x, right, plus i of x times y prime of x. Now, check it out. Let's come up here and multiply both sides by a function i of x, whatever that may be. What do I get? I get i of x, y prime of x, plus i of x, p of x, y of x, everything's of x, i of x, q of x. Okay? Now, look at this. This right here, if that were equal to that, I would be home free. Why? Because this is already equal to this which means this whole thing here could collapse down to a product rule. And we would be so happy. So what does I need to be? Well, I needs to be so that these two things are the same thing. Let's check that out. I prime needs to be I times P. <gasps> separable, separable. Pull the I over, get one over I. I prime equals P. Integrate, and I get what? natural log of absolute value of i is equal to uh, the antiderivative of p of x dx plus some constant that I generate here. So I take the um, exponentiate both sides and then drop the absolute value and what do I get? I get i is equal to some constant a e to the antiderivative where a is what? a can be plus or minus e to the c. That's what a can be. Now look, we're just looking for some i of x that works. This is true. This holds true for any a. Well, what's my favorite a? Well, you say, well, your favorite a is zero. Well, you're right. That would be awful to multiply both sides by zero. Not very interesting. My next favorite one is one. So let's let a be one. So let's use the integrating factor of i of x equals e to just the anti, the principal antiderivative of p of x. Okay? And then look what happens. This whole thing up here would collapse down to i of x times y prime is equal to i of x q of x. Now grade both sides, and I get i of x y is equal to the integral of i of x q of x which is something i don't know what but it's something and that's going to have a constant that comes out of it and then whatever it is i'll divide by i of x and so my solution in the end is this i of x q of x dx Right, where the, the, the constant of integration is in here, and the i of x is given by this. Right, let's do an example. All right, we solved this at the beginning of the year. We gave it to one of the uh, uh, groups, and remember, it was kind of tough when the other ones weren't. It's kind of evil, and that's what we are is evil. So, but now we can work on this. Let's see what we got. We got y prime minus y is equal to x. So my p of x is minus 1. So my principal antiderivative of that is what? Uh, the integral of p of x dx is negative x. And so my integrating factor is e to the minus x. Right? If I multiply both sides of this up here by that, I get e to the minus x 
y prime minus e to the minus x y equals x e to the minus x right but that is product rule that simply is e to the minus x y prime equals x e to the minus x integrate both sides the e to the minus x y equals integral x e to the minus x dx I'll let you figure out what that is All right and then I will multiply by e to the x and so I get y is equal to e to the x integral x e to the minus x dx All right and that would be our general family of solutions let's do one more oh now we've got something in front of the y prime no problem we'll divide by it but we just know then that we're not allowing x to be zero right um, so I divide by it and I get what y prime plus 1 over x y is equal to 1 over square root of x there's my p of x I will take the integral of 1 over x dx that's what the natural log of absolute value of x right and then I want to take e to that and that's what well, that gives me my integrating factor of merely being absolute value of x right well x has got to be positive anyway or we would have non-real solutions up here so And x has to be greater than zero because we divided by x. So you can make it, right? So let's multiply both sides by x and see what we get. We get x y prime. Oh, I realize I must have done more work than I should have. I did. And that's always the case. So it's x y prime equals right, square root of x. So we integrate both sides x y is equal to the integral of x to the one half dx right and I divide by x y is equal to 1 over x integral now what is that I think we can even do that pretty quickly huh so that's what two-thirds x to the three halves plus a constant and there we go our solution to that thanks Hope that helps.